anytime electricity prices rise or reliability gets worse, nuclear power comes up as the silver bullet. I mean, clean, reliable, always on. But here's a hard truth. Nuclear power doesn't fail because of ideology. It fails because of cost, schedule, and risk. And those three things matter more than ever in a grid that needs solutions now, not decades from now. But before we dive in, click that like, subscribe, and the alert bell if you appreciate these breakdowns and want to help the channel grow. All right, let's get into this. And let's start with the most obvious issue, that being time. New nuclear plants routinely take 15 to 25 years from concept to actual operation. So that includes licensing, environmental review, design certification, uh, financing, construction, testing, commissioning. Even under ideal conditions, nuclear simply does not operate on the timeline required to solve today's supply demand problem. See, our electricity crisis is unfolding in the 2020s. Nuclear shows up maybe in the 2040s. Then there's the, the problem of cost. Nuclear power is also the most expensive electricity generation we can attempt to build. Look no further than some of these recent U.S. projects. Um, Vogel units three and four, they took more than a decade longer than planned. The final cost exceeded $35 billion. I mean, ratepayers paid long before power was ever delivered. And no private investors want this risk, which is why nuclear almost always requires massive federal loan guarantees, cost recovery from customers during construction, and government assumption of the downside risk. Compare that to solar and storage, which cost a fraction of the price, can be built in one to three years, and don't require taxpayers to backstop failure. The economics are brutally mismatched. Then there's also the risk of these nuclear plants. So advocates often point out that major accidents are rare, and that's true. But nuclear risk isn't about how often something goes wrong. It's about what happens when it does. I mean, we've seen this reality before. Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, Fukushima in Japan. Each of these events carried long lasting health, environmental and economic consequences. I mean, a single nuclear accident can mean long-term land contamination, population displacement, decades of cleanup, permanent political and public trust fallout, not to mention any other health issues. These events may be rare, but they are disasters nonetheless, and they have to be factored into any honest assessment of nuclear power. And there's another risk that rarely gets discussed, security. Nuclear facilities are critical infrastructure, and that makes them strategic targets. I mean, we've seen this play out in real time during the Russia-Ukraine war. Russian forces occupied the Chernobyl exclusion zone early in the conflict. Fighting around Ukraine's nuclear facilities raised global concern about, uh, let's say, accidental release, grid loss, or sabotage. I mean, even without a direct attack, military conflict, terrorism, or insider threats introduce risks that simply don't exist for distributed energy systems. Because of this, nuclear plants require heavy physical security, constant arm protection, hardened containment and monitoring systems, and extensive emergency planning zones. All of that adds cost, complexity, and delay, and it's one more reason nuclear struggles to scale in today's risk environment. Now, Let's talk about something called small modular reactors. Uh, they refer to them as SMRs because they sound like a better option than traditional large scale nuclear plants. In theory, SMRs are smaller, they're safer, cheaper, faster to build. In reality, no SMR is operating commercially at scale in the US. Costs have risen, they haven't fallen. Flagship projects have been delayed or canceled and financing remains pretty much uncertain. So SMRs, they're promising on paper, but today they are just prototypes, demonstration projects, and not a deployable solution for the 2020s. So betting our near-term grid reliability on SMRs is betting on technology that hasn't proven it can be built on time or on budget. So nuclear power, it's not evil. It's just misaligned with the crisis we're facing. Our problem again is speed, scalability, cost control, and flexibility. Nuclear, it delivers long timelines, massive capital risk, uh, centralized vulnerability, and political and security complexity. Those mismatches are why nuclear keep missing its moment. 
So when someone says nuclear will save us, the honest answer is no, it won't. Not right now. Not on the timelines we need. Not at a cost we can tolerate. And not without risk unique to this type of power generation. In the next episode, we're going to look at another massive problem hiding in plain sight, interconnection. And then as we move into January, we're going to shift from problems to solutions. What actually works, what scales fast, and how individuals, businesses, and communities can take control of their energy cost and resilience. So hit subscribe, because once you understand what's slowing the grid, the real solutions become impossible to ignore. We'll catch you next time. Mm.